Welcome to the next short video. Let me explain to you why flow variables will put your NIME usage to the next level. Like a hidden superpower. Just don't disclose your alter ego. Flow variables are super powerful because they enable you to streamline your whole workflow. Instead of choosing the buyer in five different nodes like row filters or exo writers, you set them up once and use them multiple times. As with every good superpower, there is more. You can get flow variables from user widgets like dropdowns or date selectors. And then there is even more. You can kind of auto create flow variables based on single nodes in your NIME workflow. So let's dive deeper into how flow variables work. First, there are five different data types for flow variables. Flow variables can be strings, integers, doubles, file paths and arrays. We will not cover arrays here, but you know almost every other one. Strings are texts, integers are whole numbers and doubles are decimal numbers. The path data type might be new to you. We have touched on it briefly in the last video. A very common practice here is converting strings, text, to file paths using the string to path variable node. And this brings me to another important point. A lot of the nodes you already know can also be performed on flow variables. This is done through the same nodes, just that they have the flow variable add-on to the node name. Like this one here, string manipulation the variable version. This is genius by name because otherwise you would always have to convert flow variables back to tables, manipulate them and turn them into flow variables again. Boring. This helps you to keep your workflows clean. So let's have a look at a few typical examples where you use flow variables all the time. Let's just quickly switch to the computer. A very typical use case is to get today's date. We simply do that by using the date and time widget nodes. So go to the node repository and enter date and the ampersand time. And under the widget nodes, here you can see it, date and time widget. We just drag and drop it onto the canvas. If we open it up, you see it comes with a variable by default. You could also see this from the red dot here as the only outport. So what we do is we choose date from the type selection here, and then we check use execution time, which basically gets today's date. Finally, let's give the variable a more interesting name. Let's say var report date something like this, click OK and execute. Label it. And if we right click and say flow variable output, we see we got a string for the variable var report date with the text of today's date as a value. Another very common use case is to create dynamic file names from flow variables. Let's assume we have a supplier file based on our PBO and we want to have that supplier name reflected in our file name. To do that, we need to import the PBO data and I have prepared this already here for you. So let's quickly execute this one. You can see it imports 500 line items with 11 columns. So the next thing we want to do is to filter for a specific supplier and we do that by using a nominal row value filter. Go on that and we say, okay, for this example, we just use the company named Crazy Eddie. We label it and say, choose supplier and execute. Now you see, we only have line items with supplier Crazy Eddie here. The core calculation we want to do is we want to group by the PO by buyer here for that specific supplier. So we use a group by 
add it to the workflow, label it group supplier PBO by buyer. Double click to open its config and we want to use the group buyer. Let's say buyer surname. The aggregation is of PO value and here we use the sum. We keep the original names. Okay. And here is our resulting table. So we have 10 buyers. These are the volumes with that specific supplier. So let's move it over here. Because what we want to do right now is we want to create a so-called second path or second stream. To do that, you just click the nominal value row filter and add a column filter here and move it up. So that is basically the second stream we're going to use. We say we filter only for a supplier column. And basically we move it all over here and just the supplier here. And you will recognize why we're going to do that in a second because at the end of the day we need a singular cell and first we delete all the different columns that we don't need except for the supplier name and in the very next um, thing we reduce it to one row. So first execute this one. Now let's use a row filter. Oops, a row filter. Double click and use to one row. And we say, okay, rows by number from one to one. Okay, execute. You see now we have only one line and one column only with this name. Next step we're going to do is we are converting that table to a flow variable. So it's table row two variable. Let's take this one and we add it here. So we basically convert the table to a var, to variable. Execute. And this is what we got. We got the string variable that's called supplier and it holds the name crazy Addy. Not too bad so far. But that's just a name. So how do we make that a file path? You might have guessed it. We do it, of course, with the string manipulation node. And this time we're going to use its variable version. So if we enter string manipulation here, you see that here is a variable version of it and that's the one we're going to use and look at the input and output ports of this one it does not take data but flow variables as an input and it also provides flow variables so let's label this create file path and let's open it up so i've basically copied that path from my Windows File Explorer. So what we want to do here as a string manipulation is a join function because we want to join or patch certain string and text items together. So the first part will be our file path. But before we do that, let's just add the supplier here. And now we paste in our file path two warnings. First of all, this is local to my machine. Of course, this is local to my machine. So you would copy your own file path if you download this um, workflow from the Nime Hub. Second one, as always with these file paths, we need to double up the backslashes because otherwise Nime would not um, recognize these um, yeah, how can we say it? We would not recognize that um, this should be handled as a string. That's just how it works. All right. So we have one problem with the supplier and that is we have a space in there. So what we want to do probably is we want to also replace all spaces by nothing at the end of the day. So we just select this flow variable here 
and double click on replace and that basically enters the function here what is it we're searching for we're searching for spaces and we want to replace it by nothing and that's how we do it and we call this var file path okay so let's create it let's execute it let's see how it looks like it looks pretty good but we forgot something because at the end of the day each file needs to have its own file ending and for of course for our purposes that would be an excel file so we add comma double quotes and then we say dot xlsx okay execute again have a look now it looks good we do not have any spaces anymore and it looks like a good file pass but wait a minute that is a string a string is not the right data type for our Excel writer. It would require a file path data type. So what we need to do is we need to convert that string to a path. And of course, there is a node for that. String to path. And we use the variable version. Here we go. We just config it and say, which one do we want to convert? Just this one. And it adds this location ending at the end, like this. Execute. And now, if we have a look, this looks very, very, very good. All right. So that's the file path we're going to need. Of course, we label that. We create path data type. And the last thing we're going to do, we're going to add an Excel writer to our lower stream, so to say. We label it export to Excel. And then we connect this, oh, we connect this flow variable port to the upper left corner. If you do not, or if you cannot connect this, right click on the Excel writer and say show flow variable ports, that makes it a little bit easier. Now we need to assign that. So besides the file, we just click this little flow variable icon and say var file path location. It's the only path flow variable that we have. So NIME immediately recognizes that. And we say, okay, we want to auto size the columns. And yeah, we probably want to open the file after execution. So let's write it and let's see how it looks. So it's opening up Excel and here is our file and we see it's called crazy Eddie. We could of course also in the string manipulation add supplier underscore crazy Eddie or the date we could add in the date from before into that all kinds of things we can do here. So that's basically two of the more common use cases how you would use flow variables. Before we end this video, let's just quickly have a look at some best practices. It's much easier to understand what the flow variable var po date holds than if it was just called date. First, always use your own names. Make sure they are speaking. Second, I always use var dash in the beginning so I know exactly what it is. In the example I mentioned before, this means var PO date instead of just PO date. Especially when you use variables in string manipulation, this can come in very handy. You can recognize flow variables by their leading dollar signs, but using var dash in the name makes it even easier. Third, you can always watch if a flow variable is available from the right-click context menu. Just go to the flow variable tab and see what a node returns. Fourth and last, make flow variable ports visible. This is super easy. Right-click on any node and choose show flow variable ports. This gives you the little red dots you can connect your flow variable connections to. I guess they are turned off by default because this somehow unclutters the user interface. They are not visible when they are not needed. And this, my friends, concludes our video on flow variables. So, question to you.
So how do you feel now that the Brotherhood has introduced you to this new superpower? Let me know in the comments down below what you would do with flow variable superpowers. And if you want to see more flow variable action, make sure to hit like and subscribe. And you don't want to miss the next video where we strengthen your new superpower. See you in the next video and bye! If you want to go to the first part of this online course, click this video. And here is just another video that shows you some very funny stuff you can do with Nime. Oh, and if you want to download the resources and chat with fellow students, just go here to this page over at procurementzen.com.